Hey everybody, it's Scrabblized, and I am back for another series review. The series that I am going to tell you about today is the Bloody Jack series by L.A. Meyer. It is a 12 book series, and the time period that it covers is about 1798 to 1809, and it follows the tribulations and trials of Mary Jackie Faber, who is an orphan who comes up from the streets of London to become a captain of industry, if you will. I enjoyed the series to no end. It was just the most harrowing, political, fantastic series. You see important figures through history come in and out of the life of the main character. Also some fictional locations and characters also come into the scene and it was just such a wild, raucous, wonderful romp and I finished the last book today. I was sobbing for the last 50 pages or so because it's just such a good ending and you know I really did fear for her at the end. <laughs> As you can see from the cover of the final book, she's standing on the gallows, ready for certain death. Well, read this and you'll find out what happens. Oh, I just, I enjoyed this series so much. So I will read you the titles of all of the books. They are quite lengthy titles. So the first book is called Bloody Jack, being an account of the curious adventures of Mary Jackie Faber, ship's boy. She is an orphan on the streets of London and she's part of a gang and when her gang leader is murdered, she decides to take off for the sea. So she cuts off all her hair and takes the clothes from her fallen comrade and heads for the shipyard where somehow she gets herself onto a ship as a ship's boy in the Royal Navy. And she gets by quite a while without anybody discovering that she is a girl um, until she lands in Jamaica and you know she decides that she's going to show her crush Jamie Fletcher that she is a girl and then their epic romance begins. And in every subsequent book, they come together and then they are torn apart and they never know if the other is alive or if they're still betrothed to one another or promised and oh my goodness it's just such an epic adventure and and Jackie comes across so many uh, villains who want to murder her and she comes very very close to death many 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 times and it is harrowing each and every time and the romance between Jamie and Jackie does get a little tired with them constantly having misunderstandings and being torn apart. Uh, it's, but I didn't read these books all sub like right in a row. I did read them in order, but I had to wait a couple of times to get the books from the library, so I was able to read a few things in between. So I read them as basically over the course of two months. I read I read those, these 12 books over the course of two months. I don't know. You can check it out on my Goodreads account. I don't remember when I started the first book. The second book is called The Curse of the Blue Tattoo, being an account of the misadventures of Jackie Faber, Midshipman, and Fine Lady. After they discover that Jackie is in fact a girl, she is put off in Boston and put in the care of a Mistress Pym of the Peabody School. She's a very severe Puritan lady who runs a school for girls, basically a finishing school. Jackie doesn't really make friends right away except for one with one girl, Amy, and she tells Amy of her upbringing and Amy goes on to write these books, <laughs> basically. It's a little bit meta with Amy being the author of Bloody Jack, being a count of the curious adventures of Mary Faber, Mary Jackie Faber, ship's boy. So they have a wonderful um, friendship and Amy has an older brother, Randall, who rather fancies Jackie and Randall is betrothed to Clarissa Worthington Howe, who is Jackie's fiercest enemy at the school and she gets into so much trouble and she, she is um, thrown in jail one day for dancing near the docks and showing off a comely female knee puritanical Boston, of course, and so uh, she is demoted from student to servant, but she doesn't mind. The, the great thing about Jackie is that she will pick up any skill 
without looking her no down her nose about it and she takes the freedom of being a servant to go into Boston and become a performer at the local pubs and she sings and she dances and she makes lots of money on the side. She's just incorrigible and, and nothing can possibly get her down, even being thrown in jail. And actually for the first two or three books, I thought it was a female writer. Yeah, L.A. Meyer was an old man. This is the author himself. And he was an art teacher, an illustrator, a designer, and a naval officer before he began to write about the impetuous Jackie Faber. He and his wife, Annette, operate Claire de Lune, or did operate as the case may be. He did pass away in June of 2014, right after this book had been published. Um, a gallery and retail store in Bar Harbor, Maine. So that's cool. Jackie takes Boston by storm, basically, and then she leaves Boston for England. Oh gosh, I don't even remember how she leaves Boston the first time, but she gets over to England somehow and that's when Under the Jolly Roger, being an account of the further nautical adventures of Jackie Faber, happen and she gets she's she's dressed as a jockey. Don't ask. Read the books if you want to know why she's dressed as a jockey and she goes to seek out Jamie Fletcher at a polo game or something like that and she sees him with his arm around a comely little maiden and she assumes the worst, assumes that he's forgotten her and she runs off and then because she's dressed like a boy she gets caught up by a press gang and press gangs existed at that time to basically kidnap men for service in the Royal Navy and so she gets on board of the Wolverine under a very, very nasty captain. I can't remember what his name is, but she gets pressed into service there. He knows who she is, and probably because the first book about her has just come out in London. Um, they refer to it as a petty dreadful, of course. Well, before she was discovered to be a girl in the first book, she was promoted to midshipman uh, from Ship's Boy. So she is a midshipman in the Royal Navy, and so that's the rank that she takes on on the Wolverine. And she is promoted to acting lieutenant or lieutenant of some sort and um, the captain attempts to rape her and then he dies of a heart attack and so she clandestinely takes control of the ship and doesn't let anybody know that the captain has died for a couple of weeks and they go about preventing some smuggling from um, going into some harbor on the coast of France and she earns the moniker La Belle Jeune Fille Sans Merci, so the beautiful young girl without mercy. Um, she's the scourge of <laughs> the French and she takes many prizes to take back to England. It's just utterly brilliant. Apparently Captain, I think it was Captain Scroggs was taking uh, bribes from the smugglers and there was also spies that got caught and all kinds of awesome stuff. So she does a lot for England, but um, the Admiralty and the King are not too happy with her when she decides to, um, she, she put, she, she sends them four prizes but only three ships. She keeps the last ship for herself and she names it the Emerald. She, she has a lot of adventures. Um, the next book is In the Belly of the Bloodhound, being an account of a particularly peculiar adventure in the life of Jackie Faber, which takes place, starts off in Boston, and she and her Miss Peabody girls are going on a excursion to an island off the coast, and instead they are kidnapped by slavers and taken on a ship, a slaver ship to the Middle East to be sold into white slavery, essentially. And Jackie must rescue all the girls and keep them sane and safe from the men who are not going to touch them because they want to make sure that the cargo remains pure so that they get the best price for their new slaves. And it is a particularly political book, very educational as to the conditions of slave ships. They do escape, um, which should be no surprise because there are, you know, uh, six more, no, eight more books after that. So there's Mississippi Jack being an account of the further waterborne adventures of Jackie Faber, Midshipman, Fine Lady, and Lily of the West. That book takes place, of course, on the Mississippi River and Jackie is fleeing persecution yet again. 
So now I will insert a clip for your enjoyment of my boyfriend doing a dramatic reading of a particularly fine passage from this book. That must have been quite an ordeal, Mr. Fink, I comment, reminding myself to double his dose for the next time comes. Ah, no girl to go far from it, Fink chuckles. After I disposed of the Mountain Man, Murphy, and the rest, I went around and drank what was left in their cups, then went outside and greeted the dawn. I butchered a hog and made up a four-foot stack of pancakes, ate it all down, the hog included, from snouts to trotters, and finished it all off with a gallon of coffee so strong you can melt nails in it. Then I took two promenades around the town square, got a shave and a haircut, shot a man for looking at me funny, and then went back to my boat, scrubbed her down from stem to stern, and cast off, went on my way. The town of Roaring Springs voted itself dry the very next day. Still can't get a proper drink from 50 miles of the place. No, sir, it's a shame. I'm going there no more. Damn tight ass teetotalers. Give me that teller boy and someone go get me some mate. Uh, this is an example of another historical figure who has a, I guess, a starring role in the <laughs> Bloody Jack books. It is just hilarious. They're wonderful. And then in My Bonnie Light Horseman being an account of the further adventures of Jackie Faber in Love and War, Jackie is pressed into the service of British intelligence and she is sent to France and she gets herself tight in with Napoleon's army. In fact, she meets Napoleon Bonaparte himself and falls asleep on his lap at one point. Of course, everybody thinks that she's a boy, except for a few people who know that she is a girl, and they protect her secret very well. And so her infamy lives on. Um, the British intelligence service is not too happy with the fact that she spent several hours in a carriage with Napoleon Bonaparte and did not assassinate him, but she's very rightly points out that, that was not her mission. The next book is Rapture of the Deep, being an account of the further adventures of Jackie Faber, soldier, sailor, mermaid, spy. And this one, the British government has asked Jackie, well, asked Jackie to embark on a scientific excursion to go and dig up some Spanish gold that was sunk in the Caribbean waters uh, many, many, like 70 years prior, um, because the war with Napoleon is very expensive and they must fill the coffers with something. And so she does. She does go down in a diving bell, which I had to look up a picture of that to understand what it was, and she dug up all the gold. And Treasure also secretes some of that away for herself, but don't tell anyone. And in the wake of the Lorelei Lee being an account of the adventures of Jackie Faber on her way to Botany Bay, she is found guilty by the British government and her friends get to exert certain pressure on the government to prevent them from hanging her. So she is sentenced to life in the penal colony of Australia and they, the British government takes her ship, the Lorelei Lee, into service for this purpose. And her ship is carrying a bunch of women who had been imprisoned to Australia for purposes of populating the continent. Uh, many of them are, of course, prostitutes. Many others are common thieves and different things. There is a historical note on this one because some of the characters in this are named for the actual mothers of Australia. Well, colonial Australia, you should say. Of course, all through all of these books, Jamie and Jackie have caught glimpses of one another and been torn apart and misunderstandings galore. Another rather interesting thing that happens in the... Uh, wake of Lorelai Lee being an account of the adventures of Jackie Faber on her way to Botany Bay is that Jackie is captured by some Chinese pirates and the captain of the Chinese pirate fleet is actually a woman and I believe that this is a real historical figure as well and sh Jackie becomes the lover of that pirate woman although their their affair is quite innocent. It's not detailed too graphically in the book, of course, because these are YA books. In between Jackie and Jamie being torn asunder, she does she does accumulate quite a few admirers along the way of all stripes and nationalities, of course. And in The Mark of the Golden Dragon being an account of the further adventures of Jackie Faber, Jewel of the East, Vexation of the West, and Pearl of the South China Sea, she is stranded on a island in Burma and makes her way up towards Rangoon. There is a scene that's a smacks of white saviorship on this particular book. It's not the most of offensive white savior moment I've ever read, but it is there. That book is from 2011. Yeah, these books were published 
between 2002 and 2014. They are very, very, very progressive. I mean, they're just incredible. Once she heads back to the West, she is again taken into service of British intelligence. Eva Jacquelina being an account of the further adventures of Jackie Faber over the hills and far away. And this takes place in Portugal during the uh, Peninsular Wars under Lord uh, Wellington, who rather likes her style. French deserters bloody up her, her guard, and she falls in with the artist Goya. And she is a model at his studio. She also has some talent for painting, and she becomes a student of his as well. And there's also some Spanish Inquisition scenes and some horrible torture. In Boston, Jackie being an account of the further adventures of Jackie Faber taking care of business. This book was probably one of the more heartbreaking because of some uh, very unjust accusations. Of course, this is the beginning of the suffragist movement, uh, votes for women, and also the temperance movement. And of course, Jackie somehow is the proprietress of the Pig and Whistle, which is a tavern. She also puts up a theater next door, and the Puritans of Boston don't quite like that. She has a couple of wards, uh, a young Indian boy named Ravi, and Joni Nichols, who is a, also a orphan from London who she takes on and kind of gives her all the advantages that Jackie herself was given with going to Miss Peabody's school and then also having adventures in the summertime going on the ship across the ocean and to wherever that may lead them. Finally, finally we get to Wild Rover No More being the last recorded account of the life and times of Jackie Faber and an old enemy of Jackie is uh, setting her up to look like a traitor to the United States. She runs away and becomes a governess to Edgar Allan Polk. <laughs> and then she's discovered and she has to run away again and she runs away to the circus and then she's finally caught up with by the law and then we come to this scene and oh, oh my heart, oh my heart. I'm still not over it. I won't tell you what happens, but it was a very satisfying ending, all in all. I won't say that everybody gets a happily ever after. I'm very glad that L.A. Meyer was able to complete the series before he passed away. If you are looking for something to get very stuck into, definitely, definitely track down the Bloody Jack series. I, I was able to borrow uh, physical copies of the series. I was also able to borrow ebook versions from the Portland Public Library, so if you are looking for something that is rather lengthy and just really super enjoyable, definitely go for the Bloody Jack series. It's just such a good series! And I love them, and I'm so sad that it's over, but also really happy that I was able to complete the series. So good. So good. Five stars. Every single one is five stars, despite some of the problematic white savior stuff. I promise you. It's so good. So good! Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time. Bye!